thank you, uh, Giacomo, and thank you to the, for the organizing uh, committee to invite me. Uh, it's a great honor as a neurologist to be here to discuss with you the clinical counterpart of the uh, transitional cell carcinoma that, as you can see, uh, is a big part of our daily clinical practice and it is something not sometimes easily manageable, as we will see. 95% uh, of the cases are related to the bladder, but we have to keep into account also the upper urinary tract and to measure how uh, big is that problem in our daily practice, we have to remember that the transitional cell carcinoma represents the fourth more common cancer among men and the tenth among the women. Uh, and luckily, in the vast majority of the cases, it is a non-muscle invasive lesion, so we have to do all our best, all together, we as clinicians and you as pathologists, to help the patient to maintain his non-muscle invasive uh, bladder disease, otherwise the surgical opportunities are really more, more invasive for the quality of life of the patient. So what are the diagnostic tools I have in my hands to uh, diagnose, follow up and decide how to treat my uh, transitional cell uh, pa carcinoma patient? Uh, I have the imaging, surely, uh, with the ultrasound, uh, but more uh, approved and more reliable, the CT scan and the MRI scan, the cystoscopy and the endoscopy to study the upper urinary tract. From the traditional white light cystoscopy, we move to more, uh, let's say, technological sources of light, so we have enhanced technologies that allow us to better define where disease is. This is a PDD use of, uh, in uh, a cystoscopy. This is the same patient. Here we have in white light uh, apparently normal urotelium. If we use some sort of enhanced technologies, we can see clearly a lesion to be removed. So this means that this is a negative cystoscopy, this is a positive cystoscopy, and the difference is the technique that we use to rule out our patients. So we have to take it into account in our daily uh, practice. Obviously, cytology is something important, and then biomarkers, <laughs> we will discuss about the role of uh, biomarkers uh, e eventually. Urine cytology, obviously, is something very easy because it is low cost, not that low cost, but anyhow, less costly than other technologies. It is absolutely non-invasive. It, it is the less invasive procedure, a diagnostic procedure we can ask our patient. He has just to piss in a bottle that we piss every day several times, so no invasive uh, uh, procedure at all. And it is employed worldwide, so we have a big casistic to put together, as we show me, because, you know, I have been really impressed by the data you are presenting me. Uh, I'm here basically more to learn than to give you some information. And the diagnosis can be urotelial cancer, uh, so it may help in the diagnosis and in the follow-up of the patient, especially in the high-grade patient. So urine cytology is accepted in our guidelines. Uh, there is uh, this interesting paper called Guideline of Guidelines that reviewed the role in our urological guidelines of the use of urine, urine cytologies, uh, uh, cytology for the, uh, into the, the clinical practice to rule out uh, uh, urotelial cancer. And the common conclusion is that it is the most widely accepted urinary biomar biomarker compared to other biomarkers. And in the American guidelines, there is no recommendation in the primary assessment. It is just advocated for the follow-up on intermediate and high-risk patient. While the EAU uh, is more inclusive and says urinary cytology 
should be always used in adjunction to cystoscopy, starting from the primary assessment and in the follow-up of the patient. So uh, across the ocean, there are completely two different ways of thinking. Uh, and uh, uh, the less inclusive one was the NIS uh, uh, guideline who says, you can offer it if you want. So even in our guidelines, in our clinical practice, there are some debates, uh, especially between Europe and America, about the use of routine uh, cytology in the management of uh, uh, transitional cell carcinoma. But we have to consider, we are Europeans, so we basically trust better the European guidelines. Uh, the, if we use urine cytology together with cystoscopy, we are really able to increase uh, the detection rate and the potential rule out of even small lesion or difficult to recognize lesion such as the carcinoma in situ that's a very potential life-threatening disease and very difficult to rule out by standard imaging and even sometimes with enhanced technology in uh, cystoscopy or endourology and where you as pathologists uh, gave us a great help in detecting those kind of patients. We have to remember that sometimes those patients arrive for consultation, typically the females, just to have urge, uh, urge incontinence. So the patient arrives, uh, she refers to the urologist that she's starting losing the urine because she has a tremendous uh, urge incontinence. And so I use the uh, urinary cytology in my daily clinical practice in such patients because a non-insignificant part of them uh, reveal to have positive uh, uh, cytology and we can diagnose um, carcinoma in situ just because of the urgency symptoms of the, the patient. And so in case of positive cytology, we have to know that there is a urotelian tumor uh, anywhere in the urinary tract. That's, we will have to find out it, and it can be quite difficult. But if it is negative, it does not exclude the presence of tumor, sometimes even high-grade tumors. So that's one of our problems. As you all know, because you are looking at the cells that we try to provide you, uh, you know that there are some problems with interpretation with uh, uh, low cellular yield, urinary tract infection, blood stones, intravesical installation. So it means basically that we should have a real close collaboration between urologist and uh, uropathologist or pathologist, uh, cytologist, in order to give you all the information you need to work best. And as Professor Wild said, to reduce as much as possible the gray zone. That's the uh, nightmare, as we will see, for us and for our patient. And so the Paris uh, uh, Congress tried to improve all the things. And what is really important for the clinicians is the atypical cells. And what can we done as urologist to help you, it has been already said, we have to inform our patient how to properly collect the samples. Uh, is not as routinely used for urinalysis the first sample of the morning, because during the night, the patient may have some cytolysis, especially if it is a male old patient with some prostatic problems that may have some post voiding residual. So he will have always some urine, uh, residual urine in his bladder. And so he may have some cytoly more cytolysis than expected. And it will be different, more difficult for you to rule out the case. And so we have to inform our patient, this is our guidelines, that says that is strong suggestion to give to the patient to collect not the first urine in the morning and at least 25, 30 cc's of urine in order to allow you better, better job. Even because uh, uh, 
sometimes up to 50% of the reports in the urinary uh, cytology is uh, uh, a typical cell. So you know, what we have to do? We start our nightmares with such informations because urologist and patient nightmares are basically in this kind of problem, the management of micro and macro hematuria, how to deal with them, the to manage a typical urinary cytology. The patient arrives after the exams that we uh, prescribed him or because his general practitioner prescribes the exams, sometimes without any logical uh, or any apparent logical reasons, but he has this uh, report in his hands and the other drama is positive cytology with negative imaging. Let's try to go a little deep further on these aspects because you know uh, always talking about the role of urinary cytology obviously uh, it is a standard practice to use urinary cytology in the workout of uh, hematuria both micro or macro hematuria and there are really differences in the various guidelines and in the various reports someone says yes you have to routinely use them because it serves an adjunctive test to identify especially carcinoma in situ as we already said and also gives some reassurance that nothing was overlooked we have also to consider that we are moving more and more uh, deep into some sort of defensive medicine. We have also uh, to take care of our patient, but also to us as doctors uh, discussing potential risk with our patient. So uh, in the guidelines, it is underlined that. So ask urinary cytology, so you are sure eventually with the, the, the patient lawyer and with the judge. Mm -hmm. And no, because nearly 5% are false positive. Uh, so sometimes there are uh, positive urinary cytology or suspicious for oh. high grade disease, but is a false positive. Uh, nevertheless, there is a significant percentage of missing of high grade uh, neoplasia consider we are treating about hematuria, and the uh, urinary cytology evaluation represents roughly 20% of the cost of hematuria management. Is this a lot? Is this, it is uh, uh, a few? It's difficult to underline, but we have to also take it into account uh, in the cost-benefits ratio of the various uh, uh, exams that we ask our patient to be submitted. Uh, and so, in the BJU, it is uh, reported that urine cytology is not recommended as part of standard hematuria evaluation. So you see, there are really something to discuss about. Uh, that's another big nightmare for me and for my patients, the management of uh, uh, a typical urinary cell. We know that there is the risk, oh, sorry, that there is the risk of hidden or future development of uh, transitional cell carcinoma in up to 50% of the patient. So we are saying the patient, maybe you don't have nothing right now, but you have 50% possibility to develop a transitional cell carcinoma in your life. Well, it's not that a good news to tell a patient, okay? And what it takes with him, this kind of statement, it, is, uh, it takes the fact that such patient has to be submitted to a prolonged follow-up up to 24 months, not only with cytology, but also with more invasive evaluation, such as cystoscopy, uroterorenoscopy, CT scan, and so, and so, and so. Uh, and so this, may, this answer, uh, the answer of a typical cell carcinoma implies a really, uh, let's say, 
anxiety in the future of the patient, but an increased cost for the society to keep uh, studying this patient in order to understand if it is in the half that will develop something or if it is in the half that will never develop a transitional cell carcinoma. That's why I think it's fundamental that you try the way to reduce the gray zone as much as you can. And also, it is important uh, who uh, talk with the patient with a typical cell um, cytology. If it is a neurologist or a non-neurologist, because if the patient goes to urologist, typically he will receive a more uh, structured uh, consultation and uh, a more program follow-up. If he goes to his general practitioner that wants to manage the, the patient, uh, sometimes uh, he didn't, uh, and it is reported clearly in the literature, the patient will not receive the proper follow-up. That's another important thing. The last uh, and terrible nightmares that we have is positive cytology with uh, negative imaging. It happens, not that frequently, but, uh, you know, enough to create some problems. And uh, uh, if we look uh, with, the, for the, with the patient with normal cystoscopy and positive cytology, we see that uh, the, the, the more frequent is the uh, positive cytology during the follow-up, the risk to develop a, a significant disease a, is uh, uh, increased. And this is the, the summary, this is the algorithm, the rule of thumb that we as clinician has to rule out. And uh, it means uh, that we have to keep going searching for the tumor. Uh, it's not enough to have a report of positive urinary cytology uh, study your patient with uh, imaging, endoscopy, and whatever you want, and finish your discussion. Well, don't worry, it was a false positive because we saw nothing, even with the highest technologies that we have at our um, disposal, but we have to keep going even for up to, oops, sorry, even up to five or six years. It means uh, a lot of money that we have to spend with such patients. But that's the only way to eventually rule out something coming out. Uh, just to put this uh, uh, slide, this uh, aware slide, uh, because it, I was struck about those two papers during the medline I did to uh, create my presentation. The uh, diagnosis of other pathologies uh, done by uh, pathologists, obviously, uh, during uh, hematuria or uh, blood cancer uh, routine, and uh, there was a diagnose, diagnosis of other kind of cancer. So just a, a, a report. So in conclusion, uh, surely, the Paris system, as you show me, uh, improved the diagnostic power of urine cytology. I think that there is the need to keep going with a multimodality system and approach in the diagnosis and follow-up of transitional cell carcinoma. And uh, uh, you convinced me today uh, even more that a close collaboration between you pathologist and me urologist is fundamental in order to improve the quality of the answer that we have to give to our patient to better treat them. Thank you for your attention.